Hello everyone. So in this session of unit four, we will look at a very uh, useful and a very prominent technique of verification, uh, which is called equivalence checking or formal verification. Uh, so formal verification is a, is a very general class of uh, is, a, is a group of methodologies that is used to. So formal uh, formal technique are a, are a group of methods that are used to verify or design in one way or the other. So equivalence checking is part of uh, is one part of formal verification that we will look at. Uh, there are other uh, formal verification techniques, one is called assumption based verification. Uh, I think there are uh, one or two more, more types of uh, formal verification techniques. So, equivalence checking is a part of formal verification, is a type of formal verification. So, we will look at that in detail. Uh, I will introduce the topic and then we will uh, we will compare it with the we will compare it. Uh, with the regular dynamic verification, that is the stimulus based verification and static timing analysis, both we will see how not equivalence checking where does it lie in the basic design flow and how is it useful, what is its uniqueness. We will look at the application where and what all places can we apply. Then we will look at the formality flow, formality is a tool from synopsis. So we will take that formality as an example and, and go through the formality flow. Uh, there is one more tool called uh, one more very famous tool called conformal LEC, which is from Kudin. And both tools are uh, very good for formal verification. When you work in your labs or in your industry, whatever tool you have access to, you can work on that. Uh, if you learn, if you understand the formality flow, the conformal flow is not so different from it. Although the, the commands are different, but the flow wise, they both are same. And uh, then we we'll look at the summary. So, the definition of formal verification is that uh, we are looking at the logic equivalence check. Uh, so, logic, so for this, uh, for the scope of this code, even for the industry wise, uh, you can safely say that formal verification and logic equivalence checking these two terms are used in the mm -hmm. So, uh, although formal verification is a much more generic term, uh, but logic equivalence checking and uh, formal verification they go hand in hand. The idea is that uh, it verifies the logic equivalence. So, uh, formal verification is a process which always needs two designs. On one side, the design can be in on both the sides, the design can be in either RTL form or netness form. And it uh, tries to compare these two designs for functional equivalence. So it, it works at the uh, Boolean level in the sense that it will only check the Boolean equivalence. It has no way, there is no scope of checking the timing verification or uh, or there is no need to give any stimulus. So, one side there is a design which you consider to be golden. Uh, it can be either RTL or netlist. On other hand, you again have a design which is either RTL or netlist, and common verification can verify whether both of them are functionally equivalent or not. Right? Even it can even uh, some of the tools can even work on functional equivalence. So the advantages, uh, okay, does not take test functional correctness. Uh, it's an advantage in the sense that usually what happens in a dynamic simulation is that uh, let's say you are uh, verifying a, a simple uh, FSM, then uh, in dynamic verification you need to give some vectors and make sure that all these states are covered, all possible new states are covered to make sure that your design is functionally correct. Now, uh, formality, uh, formal verification does not need any kind of stimulus. So, it will, uh, it does not need any test vectors and it is very, very fast when compared to dynamic simulation. It will only generate functional vectors when it finds out that the, the both the, the, okay, one side the design is called golden, other side or reference. Other side it is called implementation. So let us differentiate the two terms. The golden or the reference design is, is the design which you consider to be correct and you are verifying the implementation design against this design. So reference will be your reference literally and implementation is something you want to verify. 
So once you have, uh, so how this flow works? First, you have to obviously, so it does not replace uh, dynamic simulation obviously because in the first place, the RTL has to be verified with some kind of vector, whether it be random or be specific or whatever or deterministic, whatever. There has to be some testing that has to verify that the RTL matches the specification, right? Nothing, neither STA nor formal verification is trying to replace that. But once you have the design with you, once you are satisfied that, that yes, my RTL is correct, then all other versions, all other uh, versions of this RTL can be verified against the reference. What could be that version? That could be synthesized netlist, or that could be a, a post layout netlist. And the process of verification is comparatively faster. So let's say, uh, okay, let's go forward and see the uh, ASIC design flow and see where the formality lies. So uh, one more example here is that since it uh, formal verification is aimed at comparing the Boolean equivalence, comparing the functional equivalence. It can even compare netlists in different technologies and different hierarchical structures. For example, let's say you have one design which is synthesized in a one, one particular technology, let's say artisan uh, 130 nanometer. And on the other hand, let's say you have a design which is having a different log frequency, but it is synthesized with artisan uh, 180 nanometer, for example. So the base design is same for both these netlists, but the frequency and the technology, they both are different. Now, can you, now the formality, since it works at a functional level, it can compare these two netlists and tell you whether they are functionally equivalent or not. There is no timing check, so frequency is of, not of any consideration. Even if the hierarchy in one of the netlists is different than the RTL hierarchy, or whatever the hierarchy is in the golden netlist or RTL, it can still verify it. So that's the advantage. It doesn't depend on hierarchy or doesn't depend on what type of cells are implement, used for implementing, implementing the netlist. The only thing it needs is that it needs the functionality of each and every library cell that is good. Obviously, you will have the dot lip. So in, this, in the case on the left hand side, uh, for the artisan 130 nanometer case, you already have a 130 nanometer library that you will read in the pool. Here in this case, you you will have to read the 180 nanometer library, library in the tool. This way, uh, it it knows the functionality of each and every standard cell, and now it can uh, verify whether this netlist on the left hand side is equivalent to this netlist. Right? So, so uh, always remember there is one golden design and there is one implementation design, or golden or reference. Or on on the other hand, there is always an implementation design. So this is the uh, typical ASIC design flow and uh, how do we insert formal, we'll see how do we insert formal verification into it, how is formal verification now becoming the de facto standard for comparing RTL versus netlist and netlist versus netlist. Uh, so first thing you have uh, the RTL design, now the RTL design has to be checked using some kind of stimulus. So it's not that the stimulus, uh, the dynamic verification is gone, but no, yes, there will be some kind of dynamic verification here to make sure that RTL meets the specification. Now, uh, let's say, uh, now uh, the design, the RTL meets the specification, but now uh, some other guy tells you, your manager tells you that, yes, the RTL is functionally correct, but the, the, the coding style is bad or the, or you have to make make sure you have to rename some signals you, according to, you have to follow good coding styles or some, uh, you have to change some uh, hierarchy, right? But the, the functionality is still the same. You are not changing the functionality, but you are reading, improving the readability of your code. Maybe you are improving the logical partitioning of your code and so on. You can work on the RTL and now you can use formality, you can use formal verification tool like formality to make sure that the new RTL here, the modified RTL now matches the RTL that had that passed your stimulus, right? Without the now, let's say 
if the RTL is of a medium size design, the process here the, the of checking whether they are logically equivalent or not through formality or NEC will take about an hour or so for a small even for smaller design it will take still quicker, it will be still shorter for a decent size design it, it might take even an hour that is it or a few hours not more than that. For a, for a decent uh, a big design let us say the dynamic verification can take up to few days complete dynamic verification running all the test case. But on the same design running formality between RTL and the modified RTL will take maximum up to a 2 or 3 hours right depending on uh, the size of the technology that we want to own but that is the max. I mean formality runs of more than a few hours are not it means that you are running on a very very big and complex design usually formality runs are of duration of 2 to 3, 3 to 4 hours for a decent size design. So, that is your runtime saving on you do not need to run all the test case on the modified RTL you can just run formality and be done with it. Again then now this modified RTL we will make we will take it through synthesis which is a normal process for getting a netlist and then let us say uh, now in synthesis now you want to verify whether the design is synthesized correctly. This is not to verify whether the tool has problems whether the synthesis tool has problems although yes in, in some in some cases the synthesis tool might have a problem might have a bug and you might discover this bug during formality. But the idea is here is to make sure that your synthesis constraints are correct. What if by mistake you set a logic 0 on an input port? If you set logic 0 on an input port, DC will optimize all the logic related to that, related to whatever input port that input port is driving, DC will remove that logic completely. And now you can discover such problems in formality. Many a time the DC scripts are long and the constraints are long and it is not easy to debug them, but such cases can be easily caught by formality. Or you have set some variable in uh, synthesis which uh, optimizes off your registers, some of the registers, then also formality can point you out that I cannot find these registers in the netlist, what I was able to find in the RTL. So, all such things, all such problems that might be uh, might have crept in because of user input can be caught by formal equivalence. So, this is the idea but uh, first idea is first you can do synthesis uh, you can do formality between RTL RTL next step is you can do between RTL and netlist and third now the synthesis goes through a lot of the synthesized netlist goes through a lot of changes in backend in PNR during PNR. There is clock based synthesis, there is placement, there is routing, and there are so many, so many things that go on. So, the best thing, the best tool to make sure that there is no logic change when you go from synthesis to post layout netlist is formal equivalence. So, you have, to, so you are making sure that your backend flow is good and it is not introducing any design change. At every step, Usually in the industry at every st step that modifies a netlist in any manner usually formality is run or some kind of formal equivalence is done to make sure that there is no design change. This is the de facto standard nowadays in industry right. So, the bottom line is that make sure that no logical changes are made that is the bottom line. So, once you do dynamic verification here at the first stage after that all these stages you do not need any sort of similar you can verify everything using formality. So, if you look at the uh, look at the post layout netlist. So, post PNR netlist let us say uh, now at PNR netlist ideally you would want to check that the functionality is correct. We check it using formal equivalence by making sure that this netlist is equivalent to net gate level synthesized netlist. You, you already made sure that synthesized netlist is already equivalent to RTL. So, A is equal to B, B is equal to C, and A is equal to C. The timing you check using STA. So, at the post layout stage, a tool, STA tool like prime time, and a formal equivalence tool like formality, 
using both of them you can make sure that your design is good for sign off from both functional and timing perspective this is why these two tools are very necessary now to sign off any chip right so let's look at the flow so uh, equivalence checking is a branch of static verification uh, what does static verification means again static verification means that any vectors are not applied it is independent of any vectors it employs formal mathematical techniques to make sure a design is equivalent it proves two versions of the design are or are not equivalent the flow is read in the design match matching has to go uh, the matching process make sure that the so there is something called a compare point we'll look at it afterwards it makes sure that all the compare points are matched between the two, two designs the reference and the implementation only after matching has done has completed it verifies so this is the part verification is the part where it will compare the logic and then if let's say you have any any register or any output which is showing as uh, functionally not equivalent then the tool also provides you ways to debug the problem right matching and verification stages are the most important those are most impacted by design transformation we we'll look at what design transformations are so we we'll now are going ahead we will take a we will all our discussion will be focused on one tool that is synopsis formality uh, we i'll be using the material from synopsis university courseware and uh, again all the uh, concepts here discussed here are also applicable to any other formal equivalent tool so formality is an equivalence checking solution that uses static technique we have already seen that it supports all out of the box dc ultra optimization so now compile ultra or dc ultra is very very aggressive in terms of optimization we have seen that it employs few techniques that uh, change the design in some manner and you might have problems when doing formal verification so one such example for example we will look at first let's look at compare points then i'll uh, give you examples of the cases where the some of the dc ultra optimization tend to cause problems right but there is a communication sort of communication uh, channel between design compiler and formality uh, using which design compiler can tell formality okay i did this aggressive change now formality knows that such a change has taken place it will help you to make sure that it's functionally equivalent it supports verification of power up and power down states uh, formality supports low voltage low power flow uh, low power flow multi voltage flow multi voltage flow has a uh, lot more complexities uh, when compared to single voltage flow so this the low power multi voltage flow has lot adds lot of additional cells during synthesis they can be lever shifter cells or uh, retention cells for example uh, in the in that case you will have to make sure that the addition of these retention cells or the or the lever shifter cells do not modify the functionality right so it supports that formality supports that uh, formality so uh, the uh, the implementation of uh, synopsis the group of synopsis tools that aid in the design implementation the platform is called galaxy platform uh, which includes design compiler uh, for synthesis ic compiler for pnr and formality for formal equivalent so formality is part of the galaxy platform from synopsis so capabilities uh, this these are a couple of marketing slides which tell the capabilities of formality exhaustive verification without test vectors we have seen that verification of all design compiler default optimizations uh, so uh, this is a very important thing here now what happens is that if you are using if as a as an engineer i am using let's say i am using a third party tool i am using a tool which is not formality but i am using design compiler compile ultra command now let's consider a case where uh, i want to do retiming now what retiming does it will move the flops around 
and in the combination logic cloud. So it will. Uh, so you have a flop. We saw an example in the detailed presentation that uh, the flops are placed at logical boundaries in RT. But the, let's say if we have violations going, uh, if we have violations in synthesis, then DC can move these flops around for you. So to borrow some timing slack from the next or the or the earlier stage, which has positive slack. Now the problem with retiming is that although at the port level the designs are functionally equivalent, but if you consider flops, the deep enough flops, the deep enough flop in the RTL is now not equivalent to the deep enough the retime flop in the network. And formality checks and, and any uh, equivalence tool, it will check the functionality at each and every flop data point. So in this case. Using a third party tool, a tool such a, a tool which does not understand retiming, the two points will be not, not, not equivalent. It, they will be not functionally equivalent. Why? Because in the RTL, the data pin of the particular flop has some other value, but in Netlist, because of the retiming, because of the movement of combination logic, the functionality is different. Now, what many engineers would do. If they don't have, if they cannot pass the formal equivalence between RTL and the netlist, engineers tend to avoid such optimization steps. I have also done that in my um, in my career. Is that we tend to avoid such aggressive optimization steps, which are difficult to verify using any formal equivalence tool. So it is very very important to have a good formal equivalence tool that will help you make sure that all aggressive optimization techniques such as those applied by DC Alpha like retiming, retiming is very popular now right? like retiming or sequential output conversion, all these aggressive techniques are they can be verified by a formal equivalence tool. This is where formality is very strong. This is where the, the leader tools, the industry leading tools like formality and conformality are very strong about. They are able to verify even the most complex optimization techniques by design compiler, right? So it mentions here it proves functional correctness of register retiming, complex data path, phase inversion. So so the compiler tries as a as a, uh, as a uh, op the switch where it uh, by default it will try and uh, optimize the design by inverting your sequential uh, output. The output of the register, it can invert it and see if it can aid into more optimization, low power implementation. So, a lot of advanced features formality supports. Then, uh, you have, you can have, if you have, if you're short on the uh, compute resources, you can use the distribution verification technique and split the load across different CPUs using formality. Uh, it has a, since it's very tightly integrated with design compiler. Uh, the formality uh, helps you in reducing the user setup with the automated guidance uh, functionality where it helps you uh, using automated guidance you can very quickly set up formality you don't need to write your own commands. Uh, it has a, a, a good GUI, so a, a GUI in formality is very very good. Uh, it helps a lot in debugging. Uh, then uh, it has uh, uh, some lock, okay, it has uh, all the language support that you need. System very low, VSDL very low, and uh, formality also includes a tool called ESP. So there was a tool called ESP CV earlier, which is synopsis a bot. Uh, this tool is uh, can even work at transistor level. We will not go into this, in, in the, it's outside the scope of this course. It's a very very uh, unique tool, and the again the application is again very it, it addresses a very niche segment where. Uh, it addresses the segment like memories, full custom memories, where memories are built separately, they are not synthesized. But uh, the RTA, the code is written for simulation, which is called a behavioral code, and you want to make sure that the behavioral code, in fact, matches the netlist of the memory. So the netlist of the memory in, case, in this case is a transistor level netlist, and this tool is able to verify that. It is able to verify whether the behavioral model, which is written separately, is it functionally equivalent to the transistor level memory? So this is an example of ESPTV. 
um, it's good to know that such a tool exists. We'll, uh, when if you will go into industry and you work on full custom design, then it's, it's a good tool to try. Uh, now, uh, this is a, again a marketing slide is that uh, it tells us that uh, uh, formality is algorithms are uh, they are pretty good at uh, uh, doing the fast verification. Uh, they are good on performance uh, side. They are less compute intensive and so on. Uh, it has a lot of uh, tool optimization techniques. Uh, a lot of DCs tool optimization, uh, design optimization techniques like report sharing, retiming, register merging, or register merging are easily verified. So, uh, yeah, this this figure is a very good figure which tells what all can be uh, targeted by formality. So, whatever uh, digital design you have, complete uh, synthesis based design like logic, this logic here means it's a Design RTL design that is synthesized. Again, uh, data path is nothing but an RTL which has a lot of, let's say, adders and multipliers. Only that the full custom part, that is the uh, RAM, ROM, and any other full custom logic, this part can be verified by ESP, formality ESP. As I told you before, it compares the behavioral model against the uh, transistor level network. Now let's look at the key concepts of formality. So uh, on one hand, you have the reference of the golden design. This design is the golden design against which formality test for equivalence, and it is assumed that it passed function verification. Obviously, uh, formality has only the engineer has to make sure that the design passed function verification before calling it golden. On the other hand, you have the implementation design, this is the modified design. This is derived from reference usually, and it is the modified design, whether it be a modified RPL or a synthesized netlist or a PLM netlist. So, one example here is the gate level implementation, which is a synthesized netlist. Then uh, there is a ter term called containers used by formality. A container is a self contained space into which formality will be the design. Now formality reads two designs, reference design and implementation design. So for reference design, formality will form a reference container. For implementation design, it will form a, an implementation container. So you have different containers for reference and implementation. Apart from the designs, the containers also contain the library. Let's say you are reading RTL. By reading RTL, you will might not need a standard cell library, why? Right? Because RTL, if your RTL does not contain any specific, any high instances of cells, then in all probability you will not need some standard cell libraries. So the uh, reference design will only contain the RTL, reference container will only contain the RTL design. But the implementation container now will also will contain a netlist, synthesized netlist, plus also the standard cell libraries that are used to synthesize the design. So, a container is just a superset which can contain the design plus it can also contain the library. So this is the ASIC verification flow uh, using formality. Uh, so again RTL is verified functionally using function simulation. It goes through synthesis uh, in uh, using DC ultra. You get the netlist first level of formality you do between RTL and netlist. Netlist goes to IC compiler for backend. Now you also do the formality between the post layout netlist and the uh, synthesized netlist. You can also do formality between the post layout netlist and RTL, but it is recommended to do the formality as as shown here. Why? Because in in terms of naming conventions and structure, the gate the synthesized netlist is more closer to the post layout netlist when compared to RTL. So if the two designs are structurally similar, it will take less time to for formality to verify. Since you have already verified that RTL is matches with the uh, synthesized netlist, a post layout netlist use the gate level netlist and synthesized netlist as golden. Don't use the RTL. It is you can use the RTL, but probably you will have to make a more of an effort to verify the design. So this is the idea behind formality design A, design B. 
any design process that modifies the design whether it be RTL or netlist formality can check the equivalency for you. After formality proves the equivalence, uh, the implementation design. So this is the what what I've been saying here is that after formality proves the equivalence of the design, implementation design to a known reference. Now this implementation design can be established. So for RTL to netlist, RTL to synthesize netlist, this is the reference design, and this is the implementation design. But for netlist to netlist, now this becomes the reference design. And this becomes the implementation design. It is logical, of course. Once you have R is equal to I, I is equal to R. This is a logical inference, right? Now let's look at the formal verification component. Uh, so, similar to the way prime time breaks or design compiler breaks your design into timing paths, formality will break. The design into compare points. What are the compare points? Compare points are the design nodes at which the functionality is compared. It is the primary output, register internal registers. That means the D pin of the register, the PK pin of the register, and so on. Inputs of black boxes. We will come to. We will see what black boxes are. Next driven driven by multiple drivers. So these are the compare points. That means at all of these time, see formality uh, when it comes to RTL to gate level formality or even netlist to netlist formality. What goes through most restructuring is the combination of. You can understand that. Let's talk about RTL, the synthesis process. Synthesis process. Will quickly map first elaborate itself process itself. It will map your registers to GTEC registers. It will map your combination logic to GTEC components. And during optimization, if you if you don't consider retiming and sequential output inversion, it will make sure that the design, the logic cone, the uh, functionality at the deep end of a register between RTL and netlist remains same. And it will optimize among that combination logic. That is the most optimization. The sequential optimization, for most of the cases, will remove the register if it is not used or if it's constant. But apart from retiming and sequential output inversion, it will not change the functionality at the input of the register ever. This is why formal any formal verification technique. The compare points are the registers, pins, primary outputs, inputs of black boxes. Black boxes are such, such modules or components for which formality does not know the functionality, or we we tell formality that don't worry about what is inside. So we set them as black box. By setting something as black box, we are telling formality to make sure to verify the functionality at the input pins of the black box, like memories. Uh, Next, driven by multiple drivers. We we'll see that logic cone is a term used for a group of combination logic for a combination cloud that drives a compare point. We will see some figures that will elaborate this point. So, two things are important here: compare point and the logic cone. So, let's see this figure. Now, during the read process, uh, reference and implementation designs are. Automatically segmented into manageable sections. Why it has to to divide the design into manageable sections to verify the functionality. It cannot read in the uh, complete design and, and make sure that all the outputs are equal. It cannot do that. It's not possible from CPU resources point of view or from algorithm point of view. So it breaks it into a chunks of logic, which it calls logic cones. So logic cones are group of logic bordered by registers, ports, or black boxes. The output border of a logic cone is known as a compare point. So let's say in this case, what uh, what formality did is. So let's draw. Let's go back here. Let's see. There is some uh, logic here also. Now it started with an input port, and goes through the combination cloud and hits the First VFF it sees. This on the left side is the logic cone. 
So this part here is the logic cone and the compare point is this VFS. Now it again starts at the output of the VFS and traverses through combination logic and hits let us say hits the black box input pin. For this compare point the black box input pin now this is the logic cone anything any logic that is coming via any input port or any black box output pin or any clock output pin all this this cloud forms the logic cone for this particular compare point right. So, this is the way that and please note it can have multi it can have the effect of multiple inputs right. This for example, this black box input here is being affected by this DFS, it is being affected by this input port, it is being affected by this input port again this black box and so on right. So, it is sort of a at every compare point there will be a cloud of compare of combination logic that is being fed by a number of flip flops or input ports or black box output ports. This total cloud of combination logic is called is known as a logic code. Now, so in the in the reference design both in the reference design and the implementation design formality will break the design into logic cones and compare points. And now it will try and match the name of the compare points in reference versus the name of the compare point in implementation. Why this matching is required? A lot let us say synthesis for example, synthesis changes name we have seen that the register names are changed. If you ungroup any 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 module then the hierarchy will be different again the name will be changed. So, lot of design processes like synthesis or PNR they will so PNR usually does not change the instant thing. These processes lot of times will ungroup some hierarchy or maybe form a separate group or change all such processes that change some of them change the hierarchy of an instance some of them will change the instance name. This is the reason why formality should first know. So, you have to compare you, you have a compare point in RTL and you have a compare point in that list. Now, it needs let us say there are 1000 compare points in RTL and let us say there are again a number of compare points in that list. Each compare point in RTL should be first matched to a compare point in the net list before you can make sure that logic cone is equivalent. First you need to make sure that the name matches. This process is called matching both non function name based and function based matching methods are deployed to map compare points. Even if you change the name completely by using the same name commands or something with DP formality will still try to match the name using some functional algorithm. So, the name matching the name based matching is called non functional matching the uh, function based matching that there are some algorithm they are based on the functionality of the compare point right. So, the matching cycle is very important before the comparison takes place. Then comes the verification cycle after the logic cones have been matched after the compare points have been matched. The next step is to make sure that the logic cones are equivalent. There are many algorithms that are are, are used by formality. Uh, I think this VTD is binary decision entry, ATPG algorithm we know it's automatic test set and I am not sure what what SAT is, but there are uh, there are a lot of algorithms. There are a lot of papers published on this. You can probably go through them using some uh, using the site if you refer to or something like this. So, you can uh, read up this material, but uh, formality uses a bunch of these algorithms to make sure that the cones are functionally equivalent. Then comes the debug cycle. Once the verification step is completed, the tool will it will generate a vector, it will generate a number of vectors that will prove that both the cones are not equivalent, they are not functionally same. For example, here let us say you have a, a, a problem in the design and they are not equivalent it will generate, generate a vector like this it will add the all the input all the 
input conditions here. For example, it can be input port or DFO. It will post some value and it will show you that at the compare point, the values are different. Let's say in this case, the value is 0 and 1. So they are different. So it will give you a vector also so that you can verify that where is the problem, right? The logic cones can be huge. For a data path, usually the logic cones are very, very big and it's not easy to make sure to point out the problem unless and until you have a vector. So vector helps a lot. So this is the flow, environment setup, this is the place where you set up set the variables. There are variables which control a lot of things in formality. You set those variables, you create containers by reading the design. You uh, you first create the container, then load and library libraries and design into a particular container. There are two containers, one is reference, one is implementation. So you read the reference design into reference container, you read the implementation design into implementation container. You use uh, run verify. Verify will first do matching and then with run verification, view results, and then if you find any non-equivalent points, you debug. Right? That's, this is the formality flow. So formality interfaces, uh, Library interfaces formality can read Verilog also. It can read uh, it can read lib synthesis library. Uh, it can read even system Verilog or the SDL or the ES formality ESP can even read Spring, right? So for standard cells, let's say you are using the dot lib for synthesis, you can use the same dot lib for formality also because formality again has to match. For any tool, any if you even if you are doing simulation uh, at a gate level, at least you will re need to read the standard cell library Verilog model. Here you can read the Verilog model. Also, you can read the dot lib. You can read any one of them because both of them have functionality and formality under form uh, For guided setup, it needs a formality guide file for SVF. So. Uh, I haven't used VSDC, but I use SPF while so explain this. So DC Ultra employs a lot of optimization techniques, or it will many times change names uh, uh, for registers and for some nets. So D DC Ultra can write out an SVF file, a guide formality guide file, which lists down all this information, and this can be read by formality to understand the design better, right? The outputs are failing patterns. For failure cases, it will, fail, it will write out the vectors. Formality reports, uh, it lists down all the compare points that are non equivalent, whether whatever are equivalent. You can save a session just like prime time and design compiler. Uh, you can then restore the session and debug more. You can save the containers also for future use. And these are the platform support. So, this is the uh, uh, the formality window. So a formality window is a tab based interface. For example, there are tabs for reference, implementation, then there's debug, then there's verify and so on. And it again supports a tickle, tickle command interface, which is same as what, what is supported by design compiler and time time. So guided setup is a very interesting feature, which is very useful if you are working with compile ultra. Usually it is not needed with compile because compile doesn't do that many aggressive optimizations. So now uh, formality can account for synthesis optimizations through the use of a guided setup file automatically generated by DC Ultra. So there are some commands you set SVF file name and so on. When the compile ultra starts working on optimization, it will write out this information of optimization in this container, in this file. It's a binary file. It includes information about name changes, register merging. Now, name change also might not be important because formality will be able to match the compare points without even the uh, the name change. But register merging is very important. Why? Because register merging will reduce the registers. It will. Uh, it will, uh, so for example, if two or more registers are merged together, the number of registers in implementation now will be fewer than the ones present in RTM. So register merging is very, very important. Again, uh, multiply architecture, right. Now, uh, if you go through design the documentation, you will find that 
Adders and multipliers are of two kinds. The first is the non pipeline, that means it is 100% combination logic. The second ones have pipeline inside them. Now, this pipeline is not fixed at a particular place. So, when DC, let's say you are reading a pipeline multiplier in your RTL, DC will use this multiplier and then it will shift the pipeline according to the timing constraint. That means if the depending on let's say you are a single pipeline depending on whether the timing volition is on the left hand side of this pipeline or the right hand side of this pipeline and depending on the slack available on the other side it will move this pipeline this is very similar to registry time. Such cases are very difficult if you do not give any guidance to formality then they are difficult to verify because compare points now have different logic cones. RTL has a different logic cone, Netlist has a different logic cone. So, these transformations are uh, compile ultra will report will write something about these transformations in the SVF pipe. So, this way formality uh, based on the guided setup formality can use most efficient algorithms during matching and verification and it improves performance over and above that it reduces the headache of debugging such complex failures. Now, in case of retiming, if the retiming occurs, if you have enabled retiming, then if you are not reading SPF file, there will be certainly there will be a, an equivalence failure. Now, in that case, if you debug that, now retiming happens for the case where the combination logic is too much, right? Then only retiming will happen. Retiming happens to retiming is there to solve the timing problem majorly and when is the when is the timing problem uh, mostly when there is a big combination logic and when there is a big combination logic the logic cone will be very very big. So, debugging such problems such logic cones are huge and it will take you days to debug the problem if you do not use guided setup. So, this is where guided setup is very very useful it is a very useful feature of formality uh, that that is what it says right required when verifying a netlist containing retiming or register optimizations. SVF is most important when you have retiming in Google. So, how do we use uh, the by automated setup file? You use this command set SVF, uh, you tell what name in design compiler. So, DC will automatically write out the SVF file for you and to use that you set this variable in formality to true and you you give the path of this this file dot SVF is written by so file dot SVF is an output from design compiler guided setup is an output from design compiler and the formality it is an input. Okay. Now, uh, when you load the designs you can it supports these many formats for all practical purpose you would be probably using the log. So, you could you would be using read where log or read as where log during read command you have to give minus r or minus i to tell formality what is this is this a reference design or the implementation design right. Now, this is the read design process flow uh, read verilog minus r means reference read db this is the standard cell library and then now set the top level design whether you are reading multiple RTL files or you are reading a single netlist file that has multiple modules either you set the top yourself the top level design name or you set the minus auto minus auto formality will automatically find out what is the top level design name and it will set it. It is very important before going from before switching from reference to implementation this step is very very important set top. Again you read the implementation the only thing that changes is the minus i option. Uh, you read the same library if, if you are uh, doing for uh, using the same library across both the design again set top. So, read technology read reference set top read technology again read implementation set the top level. If your RTL does not use any cell from the technology library this step is optional only when the reference design is RTL and does not use any hand instantiated cell right. You might be using memory, so here you will also read the memory. Right? 
Next, uh, uh, so this is these are the commands: uh, read design file, read where log, read db, set top. These are the commands. Uh, again, pure RTL does not require any component library. Now, uh, in the uh, uh, let me show you. So, in the GUI, as soon as you read reference, the reference would be if it's read correctly and the top level is set correctly, there will be a green uh, mark appearing here. Showing you that you have read the reference correctly. Same thing goes for implementation. So these buttons here will tell you at what step you are flow-wise and whether that step has gone correctly or not. So implementation design, you read it like this. You give the minus i option. This is the warning here. Do not read the implementation design until having specified the set top command. Okay, these reference and implementation design are ready for equivalence checking here because there is tick mark at both the places. We move move ahead. Then we perform the setup. So setup uh, is uh, used to speed up verification and prevent from unexpected failure. Now, uh, if you are not using Synopsis Auto setup, then you might have to. Uh, there are a lot of variables uh, like design compiler. A lot of variables in formality which control uh, the uh, so see formality uh, when it compares between RTL and Netlist, it needs to internally synthesize RTL itself, right? Because it needs to compare, it also needs to understand all the synthesis functions to make sure that the gate Boolean function of the RTL matches the Boolean function of the Netlist. When in case of then not being functionally equivalent to compare points not being functionally equivalent, it will show you the logic cone and in the logic cone it will show you the gates on the RTL side as well. So it is internally synthesizing. Although the idea here is not to get the lower area like design compiled. So the formality synthesis engine is just aimed at providing a gate level representation, not optimized for either timing or area. It is just for showing you the functionality. So the synthesis engine inside formality is entirely different from the synthesis engine inside design compiler. But there are variables which control some kind of functionality. For example, there is one variable which controls the value of the registers at initialization. Now these uh, variables you might have to tweak before you can get the setup ready. So you will have to spend some time in setup to understand to make sure that the verification goes on fine. And this is an iterative process. It might happen that you did not initialize, you did not set the correct value of some variable. You go and you find a lot of compare failures. Then you find okay, like I miss setting this value. So you go back again to the setup part, set the variable, particular variable, and then again go and verify again. For example, clock gating. Now clock gating. The step in synthesis will add a latch and an AND gate or an integrated clock gating cell. Now, this integrated clock gating cell is extra, right? Now, in RTL, the enable pin gating is on data pin, not on clock. But in the netlist, as a result of clock gating, the enable, the gating part shifts to clock from the data pin, right? So now, the compare points are not equivalent. If you compare the clock connection, or the data connection for this clock, they are not equivalent from RTL to Netflix because of the clock gating. Now you have you can take care of this in the setup. You can in the setup you can say that I have clock gating in my design. So please make sure that all such cases of clock gating are verified properly. So there is there is one variable which controls which controls that. So this is the part of setup. Best thing you can do is you can use an auto auto setup to prove. So this will read the SVF and read the synthesis options and prepare the setup for you. This is the short, quickest thing you could do. Now, black boxes represent the logic whose function is unknown. It can also contain logic, but you don't want to verify it. One example is memory, a very famous example. Now, memory is you will read Verilog 5 behavioral model or dot .lib for memory. You do not want formality to go inside a memory. So let's say there's a memory, it's a full custom design, there are transistors inside. You don't want to go inside this memory, but you want to make sure that the logic driving the input of this memory 
is verified. So, uh, formality for any black box, whether implicit or explicit, formality will make a compare point at the input of the black box and it will verify them, right. So, uh, black boxes are commonly used for blocks that are not synthesized, but you need some kind of model for that, either dot lib without the function attribute or an empty well log module where you only define the ports. So, formality needs to know what are the inputs and outputs for this black box, right, to make the compare points. So, you need to give the port definition. This port definition can come from a dot lib or from a well log module. So, how do we mark a design as a black box? This is the variable. So, I was talking about variable. This is the variable. It says that whenever formality encounters any unresolved reference, it will make it a black box. So, for example, let us say you are using a cell and for cell you did not keep the ladder. Now, it is unresolved. So, formality will make that a black box. This is not recommended. Why? Because now for a for this kind of a black box, Empty design is fine because empty design at least tells formality what is the input and the output code. But a black box will not formality tell will not tell formality whether the ports on the design in the instance of well log that list whether they are input or output, right? So it's a good practice for if you have a black box but you don't have a definition, it is a good practice to make an empty design and read in the formality. So it will make it a black box. Second thing you can do is that you can use this command set SQL interface only the set variable and set it to mark cells which you want to be explicitly black box or you can use this command set black box. So, you can use a multiple you can use there are multiple ways to set something as black box. Then uh, there is a problem of matching the compare points. So, as I told before before verification before comparing the logic cones formality needs to match the compare point between reference and netlist. So, it uh, follows following algorithm in the given order. It will go for exact name matching obviously that is the most straightforward technique. If you do not have any name, cha name change between reference and uh, implementation then exact names will match for compare points. So, it will go for name based and it will go for name filtering this is again name based. Name filtering is not exact name matching, but let us say if cases change or if any underscore is added like it happens for registers, then it goes for topological equivalence, we will see what topological equivalence is. Signature analysis, we will see what it is, then compare point name matching based on net names, this is again name based, but it is based on net names not the compare name function. So, uh, when it matches it will give you a, 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 a pop up box that matching is completed and it will tell you how many points are matched and how many points are not matched. So, exact name matching it will it will map exact case sensitive case insensitive both come under the category of name exact name matching. For example, if reference is like this capital A B capital C and if the implementation has small a and c it will still match it will not have any problems you do not need to do anything extra. Name filtering uh, there is a variable which has name match filter characteristics many times these things will add underscore or it will add uh, by uh, if you ungroup it will add underscore for example see this example reference has a has a slash here which means that it has a separate hierarchy, but implementation does not have a slash which means that DC has ungrouped it whether explicitly or implicitly. So, it will add an underscore here uh, it will add an underscore here also. So, the default value is this all these characters are filtered for name matching. So, a slash is filtered and it is matched to underscore uh, using name filtering. So, it is capable of doing that again you do not have to do anything special. Then comes the topological name matching. So, it will so first uh, the name uh, filtering and exact name matching techniques are used and in most of the cases almost more than 90 percent of the compare points will be matched. Because uh, again design compiler or any of the tools they do not use arbitrary name changing they do not do not do arbitrary name changing unless and until you do something special like that, right. Then uh, formality uh, attempts to match the remaining compare points by topological equivalence. What it means is that 
if now it will start comparing it will know okay it will know that uh, that okay these two compare points might be match there is some suspicion so it will start comparing the logic codes and if the logic codes are topologically equivalent that means they have similar structure it will match them again uh, uh, so match can matches can also be made to either directly attached so if the net name is same across the implementation in reference and it, if it sees a compare point driven by a particular net which is the same name it will try to match next comes the signature analysis the last comes the signature analysis this is a slightly more complex thing now a signature uh, of a compare point is an iterative analysis so it is uh, the way the logic code behaves on giving some input vector so that is the signature so they are a functional signature that derive from random pattern simulation so it will uh, input some random patterns and so the difference is that functional signature that derive from random pattern topological signature that derive from span and cone topology so the second case here the topological case compares the logic cones by structure the functional signatures compare the logic cones by input by giving some random patterns and looking at the signature at the functional values in the logic code signature analysis since it involves giving vectors internally generating vectors it is only useful if the number of mismatches are less if you have a thousands of compare point mismatches and if you try to run signature analysis it will take a lot of amount of time right it will be time based so what people do is they will set signature analysis false to start with and then later if they find few cases where signature analysis can be turned on they turn it on right so this was all about matching you don't need to know all of this to start working on formality only because when you run matching and you run verify you will see all these methods like turning signature analysis on and so on so it's good to know that such things happen otherwise if you give the auto basic automated setup if you use that you don't need to give any special command to aid matching right uh, formality will do the matching for you yes there might be some point which are not matched in that case in only in the case where the matching is not complete you can read more about it but if you are using compile ultra and if you are using formality and if you are using svf in most of the cases you will not need to do anything special right now comes the verification the command to run is verify and after the verify is run formality will give you a list of compare points and it will categorize them as succeeded that means the logic points are equivalent failed means logic points are not equivalent inconclusive means that formality cannot conclusively say whether they are equivalent it does not have any vector to verify they are non equivalent nor does it say conclusively they are equivalent this happens in in uh, when their data paths are very complex or the logic code is very very big right and the algorithm runs out of time so this is the report a typical verification report match compare points passing failing here it is categorizing the compare points as, as black box pin loop black box net cut point let's not go into this port dfs these are most important the important ones are black box pin port dfs and latch it tells that there are total two latches which are not equivalent what is not compared constant registers are not compared which is expected constant registers are more. so now the if you are doing rtl versus netlist and design compiler would have optimized of the constant register so the register that that is optimized of during synthesis will be present still present in the rtl in the reference design but the register will will be absent so obviously it will not be compared don't verify is something which you might have set as not verify we can set some points that don't as don't verify unread are not verified by default and do not affect any other thing unread are something which is here what is unread okay latches are unread yeah. uh let's see further so verification is incremental it can continue again after being stopped you can stop verification after let's say some point of time uh, 
and then you can say verify verify minus restart. You can even compare verify a single compare point by giving the option. You can verify a compare point. This is there a lot of lot of there's a lot lot of flexibility in verify command. You can even set some command as uh, some point as don't verify. Then let's look at the status messages. Passing is that passing means that two compare points are functionally equivalent. Failing means that they are not equivalent and formality would have generated a vector for you to verify. Aborted means that it cannot conclusively say whether they are equivalent or non equivalent, maybe because compare point is too difficult to verify, the logic code is huge. Unverified it represents a point which has not been verified yet. Not verified or not run if there is some error that prevented verification from running on that point. So, you need to debug this more, right. Now, let us come to debugging. Uh, obviously, debugging only makes sense once you have some experience in running formality, but, but these slides will help you in future also. So, in case uh, equivalence checking fails, formality has a, has a command called diagnose. So, there are two main verification results that require debugging one is failing, other is aborted. If something fails or if any point is aborted, that means it is not conclusively equivalent, then you can say debug, you can switch on the diagnose command and help formality debug it. So, this is the uh, the, the, uh, the flow chart, you run diagnosis on failing points. If the problem is identified, choose first choose the point to debug, display pattern window, display logic code, isolate the difference. Let us see it in the GUI. Uh, I think we also have a, a GUI. Okay, let us move it. Yeah. When a verification reports that design is not equivalent, the failure can be due to an incorrect setup also, like the clock gating part I told you. So, in case you have not done anything special for clock gating, Formality will report a number of latches as being extra not matched plus all the flops that are affected by clock gating it will report as non equivalent non not equivalent. This does not mean that design is not equivalent this means that there is some problem in setup or you can even have a genuine logical difference. You have to check in warnings and information messages in the log file this is very important before you debug the failures. Check the transcript window that means the window the TCL window in the GUI for black boxes or for simulation or synthesis is very important simulation synthesis is We have seen that in RTL coding if you do not do, do good RTL coding you can have a simulation and synthesis mismatch and such a mismatch can also affect the formality. Check for unmatched compare points. Any unmatched compare points can also lead to a failure, compare failure. So, you have to resolve or you know you should know that the compare points uh, what are the unmatched compare points whether they affect the failing compare points or not. Check whether SCF guidance file is read successfully. So, this is these are the basic steps you do before even going on to the debugging of an individual failing point right. Now, you can have these states where you have large number of unmatched points. If you have large number of unmatched points, you should not actually verify. You should first resolve this. Now, when you have very small number of unmatched points, which is usually in an expected design, so what will be unmatched will be some constant registers, clock gating latches, they will always come as unmatched. So, if the number of unmatched points are small, then you need to look at whether they are only small number of failing points and small number of aborted points. If such is the case, then there can be a genuine logical difference. If there are large number of aborted points, then it might have you might have a setup problem, right. If you have no failing point and some aborted points, it leads up to it points to a very complex circuit or combination loops. So, Mostly when you are doing formality for the first first time without any experience you will face this type of cases. Secondly you might face these type of cases where there are any setup issues right. 
Usually, if the version of design compiler is stable and the formality version is stable, it is being used by different groups, different design groups in your team, or then first try debug the setup features. First, debug the variables. What you have set the variables for? This. Debug that you have set it correctly for clock dating. You have read correctly the SVF file. So debug all such things first before going on to the logic code itself. And when you have verified that your setup is correct and you have small number of failures and you suspect that it could be due to general logical difference, then you go to the diagnose part. So analyze point command examines the failing point. You can say analyze point all and it will generate a list of it will a list of suspect uh, causes in setup right or it will tell you that there is a problem it can tell you whether there is a problem in setup or it can tell you whether there is a general logical failure. So analyze point will help you in diagnosing the failures further. So this is a debug window it shows you the failing points so it is telling you that on the left hand side it is reference right hand side is implementation the type is DFF. Now uh, you isolate a failing point, right click on that and set diagnose. So there is a separate analyze tab will appear. You select the error candidate and then you can say show me the logic cone. It will show you the logic cone like this. You can say you can select the analyze selected. You can uh, you can select one failing point, say analyze selected, it will open up the logic cone for you. Logic cone it will give you as you, as you see. Debugging logic cone is not an easy job, a big logic cone. It will tell you where is the mismatch. So it is telling me here that as the data pin here, there is a mismatch. There is a 0 and there is a 1. The 0 and 1 comes from a vector, from a vector that formality generates for you. So pattern viewer, apply pattern feature is used to diagnose. You can say, right click and say show patterns. It will show you the Reference and implemented design input side by side together with input patterns, which cause the outputs to be unequal. This is the vector that formality generates to prove that the logic cones are not equivalent. So again, you can use the features in the in the GUI to debug it further. So this is a, a pattern window. Now this is a very interesting part where it shows you that reference is affected by this these are the pins affecting the reference input uh, cone these are the pins affecting the implementation cone they can be different in many cases these can be different if these the left hand side this side and this side are different you have to first debug that if they are equal or so in case you have a clock gating in case the left hand side is RTL right hand side is replaced and you have a clock gating you will have some extra entries here which is okay to have so the, the 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 point I'm trying to make is that the left hand side and right hand side can be different, and the differences can lead to failures, or they can also not lead to failures in the in the cases where you are able to explain the differences, right? So the differences can be due to clock gating, they can be due to scan insertion, but you have to be first very sure that these differences are not causing the failure. On this side, you get the pattern, the input vector that causes the failure. Here it is telling you that reference design is loading 1, implementation design is loading 0. It will tell you the state of synchronous data, this is the input data, the clock and synchronous load if the pin is there. One constant which means they are both same, so you do not have to worry about this. You have to worry about the synchronous data which is different. And this is the vector 1 and 2, there are two vectors that prove that design is functionally not equal, right. Obviously, this will only make sense once you start working on formality. But again, it's good to know these these things beforehand, and when you start running formality, you'll probably recall recall what we did before. Uh, you can fix the design. Once you fix the design, you you will have to run the formality again, and it will say formality succeeded. Failing non equivalent is zero zero. Everything is zero. Right. So this was all about formality. So we discussed the uh, the uh, importance of formal equivalence in the ASIC design flow. We saw the ASIC design flow, and we saw that formality is very essential to make sure that uh, 
the ASIC design flow, you are not uh, any any synthesis flow or any TNR flow or any RTL modification flow is not causing any functional disturbance. So it is so formality is essential. I am underlining the word essential. Any chip design team in the industry, every chip chip design team uses formality, and there are many unique uh, uses of formality, right? So these two tools are very, uh, they are the industry leading tools for formal verification. Many times requires design understanding for efficient debug. This is the problem. So as an ST engineer or as a, as a synthesis engineer, usually synthesis engineers are most comfortable with formality because the setup is the same, right? But many times you will have to go back to designer and get him fix his RTL or get him understand the, help you understand the, the formality non equivalences, right? So the tool is essential. I mean, the any any logic equivalence tool in your flow, you can have one either cadence LEC or synopsis formality. But it is essential. It is most effective while doing ECOs. What are ECOs? So ECOs are something. Now let's say you have done synthesis. Now let's say you have a design, a decent size, a big design. Will take about a day for synthesis about few days more for making sure that all the synthesis reports are correct. It will go through post layout, uh, the, the back end flow. The back end flow will take multiple days, it will take four, five, six, seven days to get the routing completed. And then uh, the back end engineer plus the, uh, the front end engineer, the both will start fixing the timing using some tool or some flow. And then they will be, in some more days, they will be very close to sign off. But now let's say, and during all this all this time period, functional verification will keep going on. Functional verification is never complete. The fact is that functional verification is rarely complete. And then you might there might be some specification change, or there might be some new bug that you discover, and that requires an RTL change. Now what do you do? If you start from synthesis again, you will take two to three weeks to again come to the state where you are now. That means to come to a state which is close to sign off. Is it desirable? No. What it means is that if a change is simple enough, let's say uh, if the change is adding an AND gate, ANDing two signals, then you change the RTL on one hand and then you modify the post layout netlist on the other hand. You don't do synthesis. You modify the post layout on netlist on one hand, this is called engineering change. This is called an ECO. Formality, formal verification is the best way to verify this. There is no other good way in fact. You do a formality between the ECO netlist and the updated RTL to make sure that the change, the engineering change you did in the RTL and in the netlist is functionally equivalent. Formality is most effective in such cases. People add complete logic like adders and FSM in functional ECO. And in those cases, formal, formal equivalence, formality, a tool like formality is essential to verify that. The idea is, the, the bottom line is that any process that leads to design change, you have a golden design, and any process that leads to a change in its functionality, formality will help you with that. Whether it, it is being between RTL and netlist, or whether it is being netlist, between netlist and netlist. So uh, please go ahead, try out formality, it's a very interesting tool uh, and it is most essential in AC design tool. Thank you.